Hello all, welcome to another episode of Your One Black Friend. So I wanted to share some revelations that I had within this past week. A few, I think life lessons. There was a temptation for me to not speak on them, but another lesson that I learned, it's not what I actually wanted to talk about, but very important nonetheless, is that there are certain things that I won't talk about because in my mind, I feel like they're sort of, like everyone knows it. And so I will allow my internal monologue to tell me that now it's not as important. But then when I discuss certain ideas that seem sort of commonplace and common sense to me with people in waking, you know, in the waking world, in the real world, whatever you want to call it in reality, um, they say things like, I never thought about it like that before. And so I'm learning that even if I don't think it's beneficial, or I don't think it's important, I don't think it hurts to just take the information that I've gleaned or I've observed whatever and share it because you just never know. You just never know who it will help. So first thought I had, um, a friend of mine, their mother had a surprise birthday party. So I tagged along, um, they were turning 85. And so all of her friends were there. And so most of her friends are in the sixties to their eighties. So I was, kind of surrounded by uh, a bunch of women between the ages of like 65 to 85 listening to their stories. And they're just bright, vi vivacious, just wonderful people with great energy and great fun. Um, but then you listen to their stories and uh, a couple of them were just fascinating. Um, you watch how they've aged and how they've, you know, sort of adjusted, but you, they still care about beauty. A couple of them, even in their eighties, were getting Botox still, their nails are done, the hair, you know, is done. And these are people who are, they're not in homes. They're in like a 55 plus community. So they make sure that the hair is done, their outfits are nice. They still wear jewelry. And it was just, they were just beautiful flowers, um, even in their seventies and sixties and eighties. And I'm not even, I'm not using the word even in, like that's not an expectation that you shouldn't expect to look beautiful in your 60s, 70s, and 80s. It's just that we're not shown these images, but they are there. And it is important even as you go up in age. I don't like to say age because as you guys may or may not know, I don't believe in aging. I, I believe that aging is really a degradation of your genes over time. So it's not something that's inevitable. I don't think it's something that's in the DNA. I do think it's an actual disease that in time we will cure right? But it has a lot to do with exposure to toxins, pollutants, and, you know, like not proper, uh, I should say improper nutrition and diet, not eating properly. And of course the biggest, um, aging factor is the sun, which quick aside, you know, on this podcast, I've rallied about the sun being white. And I spoke to a friend of mine and she said, you know, could there be, and I've mentioned this before, but I'm going to keep mentioning it. Could it be that, it's not just, or like the simplest solution, right? The simplest explanation. Yes, quantum jumping. She didn't mention quantum jumping, but I'm, I'm prefacing to say that I do subscribe to the idea of quantum jumping. I do believe that if your mind is aligned on a particular wavelength, you will find yourself in realities that match your wavelength, right? As I've kind of walked down this path, of you know eradicating you know polyester and lying on and eating cleaner. I'm now running into versions of people in my life that I wouldn't have thought they would be open to the idea of eating cleanly and wearing more you know cotton, pure cotton clothing and things like that. Same you know same people in my life, but their variations seem different than like a month ago or like two months ago. So I do believe in quantum jumping. I do believe that we shift through realities. However, what she had said, and it stuck with me, was that maybe the sun isn't yellow, it doesn't appear yellow to us anymore, for the simple reason that our ozone layer is destroyed. And they're not telling us because it would cause too much of a panic. And so they do things perhaps, now she didn't mention the spraying, but Alwyn in our Telegram group kind of posted some posts pictures and videos discussing geoclimate engineering, like weather control. It sounds crazy, but it's a thing. Like they, they seed clouds, they spray the clouds with chemicals. It's like, this is an actual thing. It's not a conspiracy theory. It's an actual practice. And so the concept, the idea, the discussion was that, are they doing this to block out the sun more and more because we no longer have an ozone layer because of the 
chemicals and pollutants and things like that that we're spraying into the air. And without an ozone layer, the sun appears as it actually is. It had appeared to us for eons as yellow because we had that protective barrier. If you go on Google, there's a lot of articles that say, even though the sun appears yellow, even if the sun appears golden, it's actually white. So there is, you know, there are trails out there. There is information out there that says, and that speaks to the fact that the sun had appeared yellow. So we're not crazy there, but it is actually white. Now throughout history in art, you'll see the sun depicted as yellow, but now it's blinding white. I went on nasa.gov and one of their articles said, even though the sun appears yellow in the midday, it's actually white. So we're not crazy. There was a time when the sun did appear yellow, but now it's blinding white. Now on one end, I've said, well, that's a pretty big Mandela effect, right? Like the sun is now a different color. And my friend said, well, what if it's something else? Like, what if it's something much more simple? That once again, to reiterate that our ozone layer has been destroyed because of pollutants. And now we're seeing the sun as it actually is without any protection. Now it's just an assumption. This is just a speculation. This is just a what if, but if that's the case, then we maybe should be more careful, more mindful about how we interact with the sun. Without an ozone layer, we have no protection, little to no protection from the sun. So that's something that I wanted to kind of put out for you to think about. And a second thought also actually said this, I, I went to the dentist today and I was talking to my assistant, uh, the dental, the dentist's assistant, not my assistant. Uh, and I, w- I was talking about how um, they wanted to fit me for retainers, but I was concerned about what the material was. And she was like, well, it's silicone. And I said, silicone is still plastic. It's chemicals. And I'm not crazy about for eight hours a night, putting these things in my mouth and letting it seep at 98 degrees temperature, my body temperature, letting the chemicals seep into my bloodstream every night. Right? Because if you look up the wording of a lot of these things, I was looking up things about BPA today. I was looking, I was trying to like order, um, boxed food, not canned, but boxed food. And I was having a hard time figuring out like if it was a hundred percent safe, if the lining of certain boxes is still BPA. So I kind of went off on a, um, well, down a rabbit hole. And they're saying that like, even though the FDA says that they're perfectly safe, it's based on research that was paid for by, you know, plastic producers. Um, And the FDA is notoriously understaffed. And if you pay attention to the warding, it's quite suspicious because the warding is that it's not immediately harmful, right? So that's the wording. There's no immediate effects. And that I sort of take issue with because if I were a villain and I wanted to poison somebody, And I, over time, put like a drop of poison over time, knowing that this drop of poison in their food over time is going to harm them. I would go to jail, right? Because that's that's premeditated attempted murder, right? But somehow these companies can put poison and they say, well, it's not immediately harmful to us, so it's fine. But that word is the key word worth paying attention to. It's the immediate. I don't trust that them saying that something is not immediately harmful. That doesn't mean that it's not harmless. And they're very crafty with the words that they use. They do that with marketing as well. So you really need to be able to read between the lines. But she was talking to me, the dental assistant, as as to my changes, right? And we're seeing, you'll see on dressfordystopia.com, we're actually implementing, we're slowly trading out the old sweaters for 100% cotton, um, long sleeve tees and short sleeve tees. And then the sweaters that are there right now, we only have suppliers available to us at 80% cotton, but it's certainly better than 50% cotton. Um, so we're giving more options for the website, dressfordystopia.com. If you feel like supporting us that way, please do. Um, but I was talking to her about polyester and I said, you know, when you go in the sun, all right, you could have like a swimsuit that's made of polyester. If you're sitting in the sun, the sun hits that. And especially if you're somewhere where it's hot, 
It's 100 degrees, 120 degrees, and that's just heating up. Or if you're driving in your car and you're wearing polyester, that's just heating up and it's melting into your skin. Your skin is absorbing this, right? Now you could say that, well, um, well, actually, I don't know what you could say to that because that's exactly what is happening. Long-term, micro, microplastics do disrupt your hormonal system. They, they just do. Um, they are introducing est- estrogen into your body. I talked about it a couple episodes ago. You need to really be mindful of that. So it's not just like not drinking, you know, water, plastic bottles or not leaving plastic bottles in the car. Maybe you shouldn't be sitting in a heated car with plastic on your skin. It's the same thing, right? And over time, right? No immediate impacts, but over time, what are the effects that these things are having on our body, right? So to bring it all the way back to aging and to my friend's mom's, um, consider her my friend as well, actually, um, her birthday party and the lessons that I learned from them. So they're still trying to take care of themselves, which is wonderful. Um, and I don't think that their aging has anything to do with their biological age, right? Cause you look and not everybody who was 80 looked exactly the same. Some people were kind of a bit more hunched over, moved slowly. Some other people had bright, brilliant eyes and you could tell like they still have a lot of life left. But it was very interesting when I listened to them talk because some of them would keep saying, oh, I'm old, I'm old, I'm old. It reminds me of that um, neuro-linguistic programming um, experiment that they did where they subliminally programmed young people actually with words like old, you know, slow, age, right? Things like that. And they didn't realize what was happening, but after they were exposed to these words, they started sort of moving around slowly. Like it was just like slightly noticed, but it was a slight difference, but it was enough to at least pay attention to. It was definitely worth noting. And I noticed that, that as people age, at least they acquire, you know, acquire birth dates, um, they start saying things like, oh, I'm getting old. Like I know people in their twenties as they approach 30 and they're saying things like, I'm getting old. I need to like hurry up. Like, and it's like, do you know what you're doing? You know, that you are priming yourself to physically degrade. Your face is a projection of your mind at any point in time, just change the narrative and your face will reflect that. You don't have to break down simply because you hit a certain milestone of sunsets over time, revisiting old topics, but definitely worth revisiting and worth the reminder. So I will repeat, that's what I'm going to be doing going forward. We're going to go back to old topics, rehash them, discuss them. We're going to have more guests and talk about them. We're going to have a lot more guests guys for this new season, season 19 of your one black friend. We're changing it up, but be mindful of that, of what you say. You know, I was talking to a lady who was like 67 years old and she kept saying she was old. And I was like, you're not old though. Like you're 67. That's nothing. That's nothing. 200,000 years in Earth's 4.6 billion year history, we have only existed for 300,000 years as homo sapiens sapien. I have argued in past episodes that this is not the only form that we have taken. And the book God Cannibals is coming out this week, short story. It's going to be on my Kindle, actually changed my mind. So we're going to work it up, make it really nice for Kindle. So it should be coming up this week, wrapping it up. I'm worried it's, but it's just a foundational work to the God Soul series. I would absolutely 100% appreciate it if you guys would check it out and give it a read and leave a review, unless you don't like it, then just send me a message and tell me what you don't like about it, but don't leave a review. <laughs> um, but the argument here is that this is not the only form that we have existed in. We've only existed, and by we, I mean our souls, our consciousness has only existed as homo sapiens sapiens for 200,000 years. There have been other life forms that we've taken, right? I've argued in past you know, videos and maybe even reptiles. You know, that's a recurring theme. Um, not everybody likes to hear that, but why not? It's something to think about. Anyway, to live to 67 in the grand scheme of 4.6 billion years is nothing. 67 is a baby. Keep telling yourself that. Keep telling yourself that 67 is nothing. 77 is nothing. 80 something is nothing. 90 something is nothing. Watch what happens. 
30 something, nothing. What are, what do you, that's a blink of an eye in the grand scheme of things. That's an instant. That's nothing. How many days is that? Barely, barely nothing. Don't program yourself to age. Don't do that. Another thing I learned um, is that, you know, you listen to these women and they talk about their spouses and then they talk about themselves and their bodies, right? You see some of them are sprite and they run around and they move fine. You can't tell their quote unquote age or what they're supposed to be or how they're supposed to be, you know, presenting. It doesn't match because they present very young, regardless of how many years they've actually lived. And then there are others who talk about their spouses and you and their bodies, right? So let's talk about their bodies. They talk about how they're in pain. They have back pain. They have knee pain. They, you know, they can't move the way they used to move anymore. They can't dance the way they used to dance anymore. They can't travel. You hear all these things. And then you hear about their spouses because a lot of women tend to outlive their spouses. You hear them say things like, you know, at the end, like he didn't remember me, you know, I, I, I don't, I'm not even going to repeat the story, but there was a story that one of them told me that I literally, my eyes started like watering because it was just so heartbreaking. And, um, one of them, one of my friends, one of my new, you know, older friends, um, said to me like, you know, you don't appreciate what you have until you don't have them anymore. And that was quite sobering for me. It really stuck with me you know, and I wanted to share that lesson with you guys. Guys, do not allow circumstances to make you have bad days. What do I mean by that? Any day, I'll say this again, because there's going to come a time, especially the longer that you live, shit happens, right? Right? And maybe you get lucky. And I wish every single person watching this, you are amongst the lucky where you just live a hundred years and then you just fall asleep and that's it. No sickness, no infirmities, nothing. You're just as beautiful, as striking, as tall, as handsome, as fit as you are now. I wish that for you. But in case it's not, understand that every day that you are able-bodied, that you can take a breath in and your nose isn't stuffed and your chest doesn't hurt and you're not gasping for breath and you're not moving slowly and you can run and you can jog and you can play and you can laugh and you can dance and you can sing and you can move. That is a good day. That is a good day. That is a fantastic day. They have taught us to value the wrong things, right? You can have a billion dollars and you'd be considered wealthy. But there are people right now who are suffering from dementia and Alzheimer's who can't buy their memories back. They can't buy their strength back. And if you were able to communicate with them and you told them, give up everything physically for just one day of alertness, of being able to dance and to sing and to move and to laugh, they would. They absolutely would. And as the toxins continue to pile, pile up in our world, I know eventually somebody, some group of people will, will figure out a way to detox this planet. I know we're inching towards there. And I have faith that eventually con consumers and customers will start demanding better from companies and for corporations. And if corporations cannot provide better for their constituents and for people who rely on them for their day-to-day -day goods, then I hope more artisan shops come back, right? I think it's funny how Walmart drove out the mom and pop shops, but now I think is a desperate time where we need those shops to come back. I mean, we do, you know, I just, like I said, I was online looking for just butter and, and canned food foods. I shouldn't have to rely on canned foods. I, I wish that there was a local grocer that I could just go down and grab food from them that was, you know, grow, grown there within the local farm. That was the right way. Somehow we got gassed up and thought cheaper was better, right? Because it was more money, it was more important to have money in the bank than to be healthy. And now look at us. You know, I hope that that reemerges where hand grown, you know, local farm, freshly made things become more of the norm.
I mean, it, it almost has to, because this path that we're going down is extremely, extremely toxic and not good long-term. But billions of dollars cannot buy you the health you have right now. Doesn't matter how much money you have in your bank account, billions of dollars cannot buy you the health you have right now. When I say health is wealth, that is true. Don't let anybody gaslight you into thinking that that is not true. All of these people that we are told to aspire towards all these famous people, and they themselves are guilty of it. Like there's celebrities who inject things into their veins that so that they can be successful and make more money. They are trading in true wealth for paper. And there's gonna come a time when that's gonna come back and kind of smack them in the face. When they will sit back with regret and go, I wish I never did that. It first starts with going, you know what, this is enough. I have enough. Good enough is good enough. It starts with that. But gosh, like your health, you have to reimagine your health as like currency. That, that's my approach. That's the, my approach I've decided to take after this weekend. I, I look at my health as currency, not something where I can pay with money, but if I ever, I don't drink anymore. I haven't drank in like 10 years. But the idea of if I take a glass of alcohol and I drink it, I'm literally it's the same as just throwing money in the trash. If we're equating my wealth and my health together, so if you wanna conflate the two, then think about it as you're literally depleting your health. Every time you pick up something that's unhealthy, you're spending your health. I'll say that again. Every time you pick up something unhealthy, you're spending your health. So you really have to start thinking about, okay, I am literally 100% Health, without infirmities, without sickness, that's money. That's money. So hoard health. (laughs) Don't hoard money. Hoard health. All of these corporations that are toxifying our air and water, they are also being harmed. They're they're not immune. The shit's in the air that we're all breathing. So until you see these motherfuckers walking around with filters over their face... They're toxifying themselves and they're harming their children as well. And in ways that they may not even know of. I'm not, I'm not about to say that they're doing a lot of the stuff that they're doing intentionally. It's just this like stupid pursuit of wealth, of money that blinds them to what they're actually doing. I always kind of go back to Steve Jobs. Billionaire, couldn't buy himself an extra day. You are alive now. You are seeing things that Steve Jobs He's still alive. If you watch my previous episode as um, titled, No One Ever Dies, he's still alive, but he's alive only, you know, within, I think, whenever he was born, let's say in the 70s to like the early 2000s, and that's it, right? Of course, incarnation, he could reincarnate in a different body, but not as Steve Jobs. So he, as Steve Jobs, didn't get to exist in the reality that we are in right now, but you do. I like to think of our bodies as these really cool time machines um, that allow us to travel through time. They're just very slow. It's like a day-to-day increments. And so I'm very curious as to what the future holds. And so I want to do everything in my power to preserve my time machine. And I'm not going to deplete it needlessly. I said this to my daughter the other day. I said, you know, you get imagine you got a car. You get one car when you're born. And that's the car that you're going to have for, let's say, 100 years. Why are people driving their cars, like treating their cars as though they're gonna be able to get a replacement? As it stands right now, I know I cannot transform my consciousness, at least in this moment in space time, I know I cannot transform my consciousness into a different body, into a clone of myself. At least that technology, if it exists, is not available to me. So I need to be very mindful of how I treat it. I have to be very mindful of not putting poison into it, like treating it as, okay, this is really the only car I'm gonna get to drive. And if anything happens to it, I'm gonna have to be in the car while it's being re- like repaired. You can't just leave it at a shop. 
unfortunately, and go about your day, take a robot body. And maybe there'll come a time when you'll be able to do that. But as of right now, with all of these things about AI that's coming up, it doesn't matter. You can't do that right now. So the amount of people who night after night, day after day, week after week can go out and pour copious amounts of alcohol down their body when that is literally, it's a toxin, it causes cancers, it's a depression and a d- depressant rather, and it absolutely does age you and it breaks your body down and has been linked to diseases, cirrhosis being one of them, heart disease, cancer. You're, you, you have the one body and that's your wealth. Being able to take your vehicle through time, that's your wealth and you're squandering it. It's almost like, once again, like I, like I talked about in the time analogy, the time video, right? We're wasting our life. If you had only $100,000 to spend, every time you went to drink, imagine you're just throwing like 20 grand, let's say five grand, five grand away. Eventually you probably will end up in debt depending on how often you drink. Or do you wanna maintain your health, maintain your wealth, maintain your mobility, maintain your independence as well? Because another thing that I noticed is that these women, and this is not just unique to them, I'm sure men fall into the same category as well, but as they've gotten older, they've lost their independence because their children are now coming in and treating them like their children and sort of imposing their will on them. So there was this one lady who now has to leave the community and she doesn't really, you could tell she's gonna miss her friends, but it was something that she was doing because a family member, her child wanted, it was something that was more convenient for him. That was my interpretation, of course, I could be 100% wrong, but just, it wasn't something she wanted to do, but she was making the best of it. And I wonder if it was because there were certain things, I remember they were like, it seemed like there were issues with her memory and things like that, but she was still drinking. And it kind of bothered me, but it couldn't say anything because I'm not going to tell this grown woman, hey, you probably shouldn't be drinking. That may not be helping. And it's a, it's a habit that has been established over time. And she probably drinks even more so now into her 80s because, well, that generation, it's not, they didn't really know. And so it's, it's, an, it's a habit that's deeply ingrained. And once that habit is ingrained, it's hard to sort of get out of. So you sort of have to like take a step back and observe and live and let live. But I can take that observation and share it with you guys and hope that you guys at least take from that to start making changes so that you you can at least do anything in your power to maintain your mental mental sharpness. It's so funny. I'm talking about mental sharpness as my brain farts. Um, I think it's acuity that I was looking for, but so it wasn't necessarily a brain fart. Anyway, anything you can do in your power now. you know, taking adaptogens and, you know, mushrooms. Mushrooms reduce estrogen in your body. Cruciferous vegetables, you know, making teas and things like that, looking into that. You know, those to me are deposits of of health, deposits of wealth, right? Anything you do that's gonna break down your body, that's you making withdrawals on your health. Is it worth it? Is that cheesecake worth it, right? Versus taking this juice, this is, this juice is a deposit into your health. It's going to, you know, celery juice is going to clear, you know, clear your liver or your kidneys or whatever it is, right? It reduce inflammation. There's hemp oil, right? That's going to reduce inflammation. So you're putting deposits into your, your wealth, your true, your true wealth, your health, as opposed to continuously taking things out. I've just fully changed my makeup lighting here is bad. Uh, <laughs> I just, I just fully changed my makeup for the most part. I think I have like a couple more powders that I use like in my eyes or whatever that aren't like a hundred percent pure powder. Um, and my face thanks me for it. Like it's that much better and I feel better. My face feels lighter, but it just feels like I'm doing something good. Like before there were some makeup that I'd use that I wasn't a hundred percent like happy with the ingredients, but I didn't know of any other brands. And luckily, as I said earlier, more and more brands are adapting and trying to provide cleaner products for consumers. And for that, I'm grateful. But now it's not, you know, when I put on makeup, it's not a withdrawal on my health because I don't know what this, you know, is absorbing into my skin. Now I'm not saying that wearing makeup is a, is a deposit, right? But it's not, it's not deducting. It's, I'm certainly not harming myself by doing something that I may have been, you know, using conventional makeup products. 
right? And they may be a little bit more expensive, but to me, I'd rather spend a little bit more on a better product than down the road have a hefty medical bill that may have been caused by something that I could have been doing right now. So back to what I was saying, every good day, do not squander your good days. Do not squander your good days. And I said this to a friend and she'd said, well, how do you make a good day a good day? And my response is, if you can ask that question and you're able-bodied and able to move and jump, that's a good day. The, 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 the key is to not allow anything to take away from that. I will do, I am determined to do everything in my power to maintain peace, especially while I'm healthy and happy and vivacious and alive. Like I should not be complaining about anything while I'm able to think, while I'm able to talk, while I'm able to walk, while I don't have pain all over my body. Occasionally I get, you know, migraine here and there, but that's okay, right? That's a good day. And I will do everything in my power to protect those good days, which means I'm no longer, if I can help it, I will stop mid-sentence if I, if I have to. I'm no longer arguing with people. I'm just not, if I can help it. <laughs> I will do everything in my power to try not to argue with people if I can help it in real life. Um, I don't really go on social media anymore beyond, you know, responding to comments with you guys on YouTube and of course the Telegram group, but that's, I don't consider that social media. Maybe it is, but I don't. Um, yeah, I'm just not, if my, my, if my husband and I are having a, a disagreement, I'm just going to stop and say, all right, well, that's your perceptive. That's your perspective. And I'll hold on to that. And I appreciate that, but this is my perspective, which is just as valuable. And I'm, and that's it. Because even like arguments, that's a depletion of your wealth. I'm not spending that. The payoff of being right is not worth it to me. It's just not. Like if you want to be right that bad, be right. I'm going to stay looking. <laughs> I'm going to stay looking young and healthy and not fuck up my blood pressure because that's what happens, right? Another friend of ours, um, relatively healthy, but stress is a silent killer and was internalizing their stress. Now they're having kidney issues. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. There's nothing you can say to me. There's nothing for the most part. I mean, there's things that just happen that you're going to have to deal with it. But the trivial shit that we get caught up, it's it. that's a huge deposit. It's not worth it. I'm just not going to do it anymore. I'm not going to spend my wealth in that way. I'm not going to spend my health in that way. Be mindful of how you spend your health. Be mindful of that. I intend on doing so. I'm going to try as much to have as, as much peace that I can give to myself, which means withdrawing from interactions that are not, that are not serving me and not putting things in my body that aren't good for me. It's not to say that every once in a while, I'm not going to have like a cake or a cookie or something like that. Yeah, that's fine. But that's a small deposit every once in a while, like 10 cents here is not going to hurt me as opposed to every single day doing something like going out and having drinks. I'm not you know, trying to call anybody out. I'm just saying like, that's, this is how I'm choosing to approach it. Because one thing I can say is you sit and you listen to these women and you listen to how they talked about their partners and now the partners are no longer there. And I just wonder if they had been, ca if they had been caught up in that sort of the bullshit that we all get caught up, especially in our relationships, you know? Can you look at your partner with the realization that there's gonna come a time when either you're gonna be gone or they're gonna be gone and you're gonna miss the shit out of them? And should you be spending the time that you do have before that happens, arguing over stupid shit. Don't. It's not worth it. It's just not. You know, like I told you, there's a heartbreaking story. I'll share it. I'll share the story. Um, this lady, she told me, she said, you know, she'll be married to her husband. It'll be 65 years, but he's got dementia. And I don't want, I'm not going to. And every time, sorry, I got emotion, but every time she, like, it's their anniversary date. He, he's not, he's not here anymore. It's interesting because he now, every time she goes to see him, they say he's hallucinating, but I think because he's unable to move, he leaves. Like he's still staying here. He comes in, his, but by he, I mean his consciousness. So his consciousness comes in into the body, looks around a bit. And then I think when he leaves, when he sleeps, he's just going to other realms, other, you know, realities. 
And the reason why I think this is because when she does meet him and interact with him, he'll say things like, oh, how did this happen? Or how, what happened to the wedding? What happened to the funeral? And like, he's not left. But because he cannot leave his room anymore, he's just escaping through sleep. So now he sleeps most of the day. He's only really awake like an hour here, an hour there, if that. So he's just mostly sleeping now. I think he's coming towards the end. But she said, you know, they're the same age. They didn't age the same, you know? And she says every year, the anniversary, she goes and she sits the restaurant, holds up a glass, you know, across from an open, from an empty chair and she says here's looking at you kid because it ended something that they did every year for their anniversary they grew up together like they were married like in their like early teens they got together when they're like 13 14 they've been together forever and i was just like fuck like <laughs> she told me that that just like gutted me you know like i was trying not to cry but my eyes did water it was like i think there's just something in there or whatever um <laughs> But it just made me go like, man, we got to we got to appreciate the fuck out of the good times that we have. And honestly, every day is a good day. If you're not in some fucked up situation, if your body is healthy, you can move. That's a good day. You make that shit good by holding on to it. That's all you have to do is just appreciate it. Which leads me to my second point that I want to discuss, which is children. I've been watching Medici on Netflix it's about the Medici family. I think it's called Medici. Um, M-E-D-I-C-I. It's not something, once again, that I chose. I was writing and then my husband puts it on, but I passively watch stuff and then I get hooked, right? And um, it was very interesting how, at least amongst nobles, the family played this like a role. Now, the family was a tree and the family mattered. And so it was the Medici tree and then you have different branches of the tree, but they were all one sort of cohesive unit. And everything that they did was to ensure that the family name, that the family and their future generations were okay. And they were very protective of their unit. Everybody lived under the same household. I mean, it was a compound, but they all lived under the same household. And they were just, they stayed close, right? And family was very important and children were important and you teach them. It was kind of a way, I think, of like ensuring that aspects of yourself get passed on. It's a type of immortality. And I think about that and I contrast it to how we are told that when your child turns 18, you kick them out of the house and that they're on their own. And I think about just how young 18 really is and how at 18 to be out in the world, not knowing shit about the world, just out of high school. Of course, I was in college, but still miles away from my parents. And any kid that goes, well, maybe I don't really want to do that right now is like shunned and made fun of for still living with their parents, which I think is unhealthy as fuck because, well, one, like if the kid's not ready, like they're not ready and that's okay. Once again, remember the video I posted about staying within your comfort zone. There's nothing wrong with that. But two, wealthy people don't do that. Do you guys realize that, right? like wealthy families, they keep everything in their family. Like their kids are usually pretty close to them. Their kids are usually in the family business. If they're not living directly with them, with their parents, the kids, they're usually living in homes that are owned by their parents. So they're not worried about a mortgage or, you know, like that they are usually set. So wealthy people do a good job of actually keeping their family and their children as close to them as possible. Whereas like middle class and lower middle class and the poor like are encouraged to kick your kids out at 18 so that they're forced into the low like labor market, right? The low wage market so that they can go work jobs, minimum wage jobs so that they can be essentially exploited labor for corporations who are then going to take that money <laughs> and make sure that their kids are going to really good schools and then are, you know, employed and are able to stay close to them. So they can keep their family close while we are encouraged to kick our kids out at 18 and have them go and pay rent to a property manager or to a property that is owned usually by a wealthy person. And that money that your child is paying to them is now going to their coffers and their trust to ensure that their family trust is good. 
Do you see the scam there? I need you guys to think about that because it hit me. Like I was just watching that. I mean, I've had the thought before, but I didn't really think deeply about it, especially historically until I started thinking about like a lot of the wealthy people that I know and how they raise their kids versus my ass. <laughs> I left the house when I was 17. Okay. I had a scholarship to go to college. That was good. But it was like, I was on my own. I had no business being on my own in the world at that age. I didn't know shit. I'm still learning shit. Think about that. And think about, like, you want to talk about conspiracy theories. You think about just how fucked up that is. And I basically told my kid, like, you know what? Like, you're staying close to me. I don't care. Like, I will ensure I'm trying to move my mom, trying to convince my mom to move close to me so I make sure that they're okay. Like, I want that. I kind of joked on some lives that I'm going to like build a family, like a crest or whatever. Like they need to bring that shit back. Cause like, um, Edgar Allan Poe, the cast of Amontillado, that shit was my shit as a 12 year old kid. Like I I was like, (laughs) any person who challenges my family, I will, (laughs) I will destroy them with impunity. Like that was me. I was like, I love this shit. Yeah. Uh, I was a weird kid, but like, even though I'm a female, I, you know, it's, there's a difference, but I might be able to, I might change some things up. I, I might design a family crest, probably have bears and shit and fucking eagles. It's going to be like a lion. There's definitely going to be lions on there, like a big ass tree. Yeah. I'm, I'm really feeling this right now. I'm definitely going to bring back, let's bring back family crest. If this resonates with you and you have a kid, don't be in such a hurry to kick your fucking kids out and make them, especially nowadays with this economy, like, Keep them close to you. The world is not the same world that like our parents grew up in. Shit's weird now. I mean, I'm not just saying this. I asked a lot of the old people that were, I shouldn't call them older, a lot of the elderly. I don't know what the word is. The the 70, 60 year olds. I was like, are things different? Because I want to know, right? Until I build my time machine. I want to know, like... Are things different? And they're like, absolutely. I've never seen anything like this before. And they're even talking about how like, like they're getting grandkids and great grandkids. And they're like, I don't know if this is the world that I really feel right bringing kids into. That's coming from 80 year olds. That's coming from 70 year olds, 60 year olds. Like that's something to really think about. I'm not trying to like dissuade you from having kids. I'm just saying like, if you do have kids, keep those little brats close to you. (laughs) Like if they're going to go to community college, that's fine. If they're going to go up to a four-year university, that's okay too. If you feel like fine, safe, like pushing them out and they, you know, they want to go to the other coast and go as far away from you as possible. That's understandable. But I told my kid, like, you don't have to do that. Like, I think at least your freshman year, just for the experience, that's fine to live on your own, to learn to live on your own, to be amongst your peers or whatever. That's fine. But like, don't feel like you have to do that. Even some cultures like in India, a friend of mine was telling me like in India, like people keep their kids close. Like there are people in their thirties that still live with their parents because they're not married yet. So what's the point? And then they're working towards like a unit, right? Like they're going out, they're allowing their kids to save money because get, guess what takes the bulk of your paycheck, right? It's it's your room and board. That's why you have corporations like Blackhawk and investment um, groups, like you know, buying up all of these single family homes because they want to make things expensive for people, so that you're now it's a subscription service, right? Your home, everybody's now being for will be forced to rent. But see, if your parents have owned a house. And they've owned the house for like ages. They probably bought it in the 90s or the 80s even. Their mortgages aren't as high. Does it make any sense for you, especially if they're open to it and they're getting older, for you to go out and go live in a shitty apartment if you can take the money that you would have put towards an apartment to rebuild your parents' house? If they're okay with that. And of course they would agree with that. You know, it depends on whose parents. Like this may not work for everybody, but this is like a mindset thing, right? It's something that they have to have the mental flexibility for, but also they have to be open to the idea. But assuming that they are and you are and you're, you know, protective of your parents and your family and just your line. Like imagine instead of going and paying all this money for rent, you saved a lot of your money that would be going to rent. Stay with your parents. If you're not married, who cares? Even if you are married. If you're a single parent, who cares? That's built in babysitting right there. Like that, what else are they doing? I'm just putting it out there to kind of let's normalize this shit. 
because it's already normalized amongst the super wealthy and the elites. The super wealthy and elites aren't sending their kids off at 17, 18 years old, telling them to go work at McDonald's or or Walmart for like $10 an hour or whatever, $12 an hour. That's not happening. They're encouraging you to do that so that they can exploit your children, allegedly, right? And then this idea of, oh, well, you still live with your parents, so the fuck what? If you're not married, what's the problem? What's wrong with being around family? It takes a village to raise a child, even if you are married. What's wrong with that? There's so many other communities on this planet that don't live the way that we do in the West and they're fine, that aren't shamed for wanting to stay close to their family and to take care of the family and have their family take care of their children. What's the problem? Like, maybe it's a fucked up situation that we're actually in. Maybe that's why a lot more people are becoming more and more depressed and isolated. Who does it benefit being this isolated? And now you hit 17, 18, and now you're gone, right? And then by the time you're ready to come back, you're so isolated from your parents because from the moment you moved out, you only see them once or twice a year. Right? These are people who raised you. And now they're virtual strangers. That's not always the case in other countries. Why does it have to be the case here? Maybe that can be the counter to like inflation. Maybe, yeah, go get a job, but bring that shit home and help your parents. Yeah, your parents might probably drive you crazy, but I don't know. I just know for me, I intend on keeping my kid close. She's a cool person. You know? There's nothing wrong with that. Keeping your family close, being close to people that are that just being close to people. Maybe we start challenging that a bit. Maybe we start building and rebuilding our natural communities. Can we can we do that? Anyway, just some stuff I wanted to share with you guys um, on a Tuesday or whenever this airs on a Wednesday. <laughs> we will be talking about more weird stuff. Um, would love to have some discussions once the God Cannibal book is out. Um, yeah, it should be fun. It should be fun next couple of months. Summer's going to be fascinating. Um, I guess I could wrap it up as to my thought. I had a couple of people comment to the Telegram group to ask, you know, what our thoughts on AI and what's going on there. And, you know, my response, um, with the whole AI thing is that, oh yeah, the Google guy, the Google guy, the step down, um, he's saying things are moving too fast and people aren't going to be able to tell what's real from what's not. And on one end, I get it. On the other end, everything in this reality is by design, double-edged. It's just programmed into the simulation. So there's always both sides. So on one end, yes, people will not be able to tell that that's happening. Um, But I would argue that this technology that we're now aware of has been, been used since at the least, at least the 70s and the 80s. Like I've seen some stuff that made me go, "Mm, I feel like that was... AI computer generated, and they just passed it off to the general public. So anything that makes people maybe second guess what they're perceiving, what they're being told, I don't see that as a problem, right? Like pausing and saying, no, verify that. Like I'm seeing more and more people asking, wait, is this real? When before people would just take it at face value. Are things moving too quickly? Yes. I posted to the Telegram group um, the steps of the, there's like a trending Harry Potter um, Balenciaga video. I didn't know about the trend. Robin Hood told me I signed up to their newsletter. And so I found a video on YouTube that showed how they did it in case people wanted to pull whatever resources from um, from the setup that they want that might be able to help them in other scenes. But a member of the group, shout out to Sam, was like, well, can you use this to build a, a website? I don't see that as a problem. People who couldn't afford a web designer and still want to create, right? Because on one end, you have web designers that are available on Fiverr. That's great. But then 
a couple people before I found the guy that I'm working with, and he's a bit slow to be honest, but he was more manageable. A couple other people were charging like in the thousands to design a website. Like that's prohibitive. So if AI can be used in a way to help people who want to do something, but cannot, right? Because there's a cost sort of um, barrier, then I think that that's a good thing. Obviously you guys know my issue that, that, that I've had with, you know, the work from artists being stolen and passed off. That is still an issue of mine. We are now starting to see corporations, particularly music companies, like there was an AI generated song that used Drake's voice and then went viral. And now they're scrambling to like tamper that, bring that down. So yeah, like how does it fucking feel? Right? Cause when it was happening to little artists, shout out by the way to me, um, you can get this shirt. <laughs> on jollyartist.com. I'm pointing, for those of you who listen to the audio, I'm pointing to my t-shirt. You can see the video. It says girl power. It's a bit naughty, but it's cute. Um, designed by me, hand-drawn by me, no AI generated um, at all, handmade. Um, but now you're seeing corporations getting exploited and now they're they're you know trying to stamp out fires. Um, but when it was little artists, Nobody gave a shit, right? Like nobody gave a shit. But now it's like corporations like, oh no, like it's happening to like our million dollar, you know, talent that we own. So now we're going to see some, some battles happen in courts. But while we're still in this gray area, if there are things that you can use to help you get to where you're going, absolutely use it. Obviously having a human being working on something like my logo for my YouTube channel, the animation, the drawing of me, that was done by hand. I paid somebody off of fibers to do it. I could have done it. I just didn't have the time to do it. So I paid somebody to do it, right? I don't want to have that AI generated, but maybe you want to be able to design something like that. You don't have like the skills to do it or just like, you're not like me where I'm just like, yeah, I don't want, I don't have the time to do it, right? but you don't want to pay the money to do it. Um, but you have the general idea. If AI can help with that, it, I'm not condoning it, but I'm saying that if it's, if you being unable to do that becomes prohibitive to you doing things that are going to better your life and better you, um, I can't tell you not to do that. You know what I mean? So use it. You use the resources while they are still legal in the sense of like, while you can, right? If there are things that is just directly, you could tell it's theft, please don't. And if there are ways in which you could support an artist directly and you are able to, please do, right? Like still move, you know, morally, ethically, right? Because everything you do is stored in the fabric of space-time, by the way, just FYI. Not saying you should feel guilty about it so that in case you're going to reincarnate, right? If, if you're set up to reincarnate and they're like, hey, remember when you stole from that artist, you should go back and fix that. Like the, the guilt might be used against you to force you back into another incarnation. So just keep that in mind. But for the most part, right? Like if you just, there's certain things that you want to do, but like you can't do it. And so it's stopping you from getting things done, then use, use it. Find the way to use the tools creatively in my opinion. Now, I don't know what the director of Google guy that stepped down, what he's seeing. And I'm sure there's some stuff that he's not really speaking about right now. And I don't know if he's just saying stuff. So now we're all talking about him and maybe he's got a book that he's going to put up I and mean, he's like 75 years old. Maybe he was going to retire anyway. And now he can put out a book, you know, talking about whatever it is he's talking about, but that's a perfect hype. You don't know. You just, you don't know what's going on. Um, do I think that it's like the end all be all of everything? Um, you guys know my thoughts. I've put out several videos over the last like five, six years on AI. I, was, I have a whole podcast about AI that came out before people were even talking about AI. Um, do I think that, you know, an artificial super intelligence will be developed? Yes. I actually have argued that it's already been developed and it's influencing us right now and has always controlled our reality, but that's besides the point. Is that something that we should be worried about right now? I don't know if it is something we should be worried about right now. I also want us to be very mindful of hype, right? 
and pumping schemes, right? Just be very mindful of that. But all in all, what I can say is that AI needs the work of human beings. They actually have it right now where they are implementing tools to make it so that they can make the distinction, like invisible watermarks. I've talked about this before, but it's worth noting. They're putting invisible watermarks into AI generated like works of art, you know, writings, books, articles, whatever, so that people know. And of, of course these most importantly, not even people, but these corporations also know what work is AI generated and what work is human generated. And they say, oh, because it's never been tested against AI generated work, but that's bullshit. It's not like it's going to explode. What it is, is that they know that AI needs data for real life human beings. Now, the majority of people are going to do the lazy thing, which is stop trying and become 100% dependent on AI. So we're going to see sort of lazily produced stuff. And you're going to be able to tell that that's AI and things are going to sound like AI generated because they're all pulling from the same source, you know? But I believe, or I think anyway, that that's going to make human generated, pure creative work that's generated by real creative human beings who continue to do their work. I think, I think, I could be wrong. Hey, that's just, just a theory. But I think that more and more real human ingenuity, real human creativity that's going to become much more valuable going forward. So if you are in that field of, you know, creating, writing, drawing, you know, like imagining things, you know, don't, don't rest on your laurels, like use the tool. Don't let the tool use you. You get what I mean? Like use the tool to sort of remove the drudgery of your work, to, to make your work easier faster, but not fast in the sense of you got to just keep putting out stuff like that. I hope that's not, you know, not your takeaway from when you think of, you know, doing things, creating things faster. Don't do that. But just the tedium, you know, or you could use it to, the, to, to design like a reference even. Right. So then you're not like, it's not that. And then if you're an, a painter from the reference, you can then paint from there. There's ways that we can use these things, you know, to, to help ourselves. You know, so that's just certain things that we should keep in mind. As of now, like we don't, all of this stops if we just turn off our phones. <laughs> like I could keep saying that because it's true. Like everyone's like, oh my God, AI, da, 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 da. But it's like, just turn off the internet. Like put your phone down, just walk away. I, I've, I've done it and I'm fine. Like I just put, sometimes put my phone down, just go for a walk. There's nothing, like I'm okay. Like in my street right now, we don't have, you know, like facial recognition tracking software, right? Like relatively, as long as I'm not walking, there's no chip in my body. Uh, <laughs> as long as I'm not walking with my phone, like I'm free, right? When that starts to kick off, that's when I'm going to start being like, okay, things are getting really fucking weird. Not saying that that's not coming. Not saying that that does not exist right now in a probable reality. Not saying that that cannot be actualized. I mean, I, I ideally would like us to not do that. Like we should stay away from that. And maybe, you know, with these guys walking off their jobs and signing, signing, sounding alarm bells, maybe we veer off into a different reality experience, hopefully. Um, but for the most part, like turn off your computer. Go do some shit in the real world. People are still going to farmer's markets. People are still going to local mom and pop stores. Like people, like even though the people who work in these fields think that that's the whole world, there's places in a world where people don't care and they're just out there like surfing and living their life. So it just depends on where you are and where you want to be, right? Don't let it like get you swept up. Don't let the hype suck you in kind of thing. At any point in time, at least in this moment in space time, we can walk away from it. Not to say that we can walk away from the general AI that's controlling all of our reality, but that's a whole nother episode and or podcast. Check out the Dark Oracle's Guide to the Multiverse anyway. But as it stands right now, like we're not there. So use what you need to use within, you know, a particular moral compass, right? Like within, like do what's right, right? But I'm not really terribly concerned. Yes, as they said, it might become harder and harder to tell what's real, but I've seen some stuff, particularly when Trump was president, 
that I was like, I don't think that's him. And that was like when a lot of people didn't even know about deep fakes. Um, so I think it's good that people are starting to question everything. Like we should be anyway. Anyway, I'm out. Thanks for listening. There'll be another episode soon. We're kind of experimenting. We're doing long form. This is only supposed to be a 10 minute. I don't know how it became an hour, but here we go. Um, next few episodes can be fun. All right.